It was an interesting presentation. It was uh, a humorous way of looking at some of the challenges that we're facing today uh, regarding, uh, you know, green options and, and saving our environment. He had a nice way of just putting it out there and uh, enlightening us uh, with some potential positive options in the green environment. What Bob does is he, he helps people take themselves a little bit less seriously about all this stuff and I think you got to lighten up with this stuff in order to actually make it real and make something happen. And I think he did something that we really needed which is to, you know as Americans we're so often just driven by one thing, the price of fuel. What Bob really did was he brought a whole perspective of the whole problem and that we all are part of the solution and that green is part of the solution. Bob's great. Bob's a green solution. He's not part of the problem. He's, he's telling us what the problems are and he's identifying ways to, uh, to, to fix the earth and, and implement green strategies. And, and Bob's a strategy. He's a solution. When I started this whole process, I went to the bookstore and I bought a book, A Hundred Ways to Save the Planet hundred ways to save the planet. One of the first things it said was buy less paper. So I returned the book. You see, this is why it's confusing. Then I was driving in the car and I was listening to this green expert on the radio and he said to remove unnecessary items from your vehicle to increase the mileage. So I pulled over and I told my friends to get out of the car and walk because I'm trying to save the planet. The good news is though that newer kinds of bulbs are coming out like LED bulbs, but if you've seen these at the store, these bulbs are very expensive. Which raises the question, how many dollars does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> Recycling, you know, you can't just recycle any plastic, oh no. You have to look on the bottom and try to decipher the number that's on the bottom to figure out if you can or can't. Now like number one and two, yes, you can recycle. Three and four, you can't. Five and six, well, it depends on the local regulations whether you can or can't. And then it also has to be clear plastic, it has to be white plastic, it has to have a long neck and a narrow mouth. So here's my question, what happens if you're trying to recycle and you have a number two container with a number four lid with no neck and a wide mouth? What do you do? It's confusing. How about the green bathroom? There's some challenges there, right? We have the low flow shower. Have you tried one of these where you're standing there trying to catch droplets of water and apply it to your skin so you can work up a lather with the soap? And then we have the low flow toilet. Well, actually, all new toilets now are low flow. It's instead of seven gallons, they only use one and a half gallons to flush, which is good for the planet, right? But have you tried using these? Sometimes they don't really work. You know, you flush it and you look down and you go, I don't think that's going to go down. I don't think it's going to work. So suddenly you end up, you're flushing several times and this only happens when you're at somebody else's house and they're yelling, is everything okay up there? Yeah, I'm fine, it's your low flow toilet that's not working. Now you know when you go into the hotel bathroom now, they always have that sign, help us save the planet. We're so concerned about the planet that for the entire duration of your stay, we're not going to wash your sheets or towels until they get really skanky. Okay, if they really care about the planet so much, then how come when you checked into the room, all the lights were on and they had the big plasma TV blaring on the wall? So as much as it can be somewhat confusing about going green, it's something we really need to do. Because I mean, don't we want to leave a cleaner, greener planet for our children and for future generations. And there are steps that we can all do that we'll talk about this morning. Some of them are more of a challenge, some of them kind of easy, the more you find out about it. So let's talk about how we got to this point. Let's go back to the very beginning when dinosaurs were roaming the earth and they were vegetarian which gave them terrible gas which heated up the planet and that caused global warming right there. <laughs> and their extinction. By the 12th century, however, there was a huge advertising campaign for clean coal. And they said not only was it cheap and abundant, and yes, it did burn dirty, but they were working on a way to make it clean, and within a few years they were sure that it would be clean. Now, 
you know, we are 900 years later, but they're still working on it. They claim they are getting close. <laughs> By the 1970s, we had the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, and they were given the mission to regulate pollution into the atmosphere from business. Well, the consultants stepped in. Oh, they saw a great opportunity. So they created this environmental management systems, and they were proposing things like buzzwords, demanufacturing, end-of-life management, and their absolute favorite, renewable and sustainable consulting. <laughs> That's the one that they focused on the most. In the 1990s, concern about global warming really captured public attention with the landmark British Nicker study. And as you can see, conclusive proof that the planet definitely was getting hotter. <laughs> People said, OK, we've made all these advances. How can we tie this all together? We need somebody to come to the rescue and really save the planet and bring it all together. And that's what we got. Al Gore came to the rescue with sustainability. That's what the S stands for. Now that consumers are buying green products is such a growing demand, it's brought us the reign of terror, also known as greenwashing, with all the claims by these companies of how much they're doing for the planet. And you know, the good news is, some of it is actually true. But you know, there are a lot of claims out there. For instance, one of them that you see on a lot of products, all natural. Now, you know what that means? All that means is that, that product may contain substances, natural substances, that you find in the environment, which could include arsenic, <laughs> mercury, formaldehyde, uranium. I mean, this is like saying, hey, try this delicious beverage. It's made with snake poison and hemlock, but it's all natural. <laughs> it saves over a billion gallons of gas a year in this country with public transportation. You know how much fuel that is? That's almost enough to drive a Hummer for an entire year. <laughs> that's how much fuel you're saving. And that's about as green as you get with a Hummer by the, by the color of it right there. I found out about the weird problems caused with using animal fat biofuel because evidently the exhaust smells like bacon and french fries and cars congregate behind the bus like a pack of wild dogs just so they can inhale the fumes. It smells so good. So what about the green office? What are some things that we can do to make it greener? Well, first of all, bike pool. Yes, good way to get exercise, get everyone together as a team and ride into work. Here's another way, ambient light. Put the cubicle out in the parking lot. They get natural light and fresh air at the same time. And here's the cupless office. Yes, you just have the coffee on a giant IV bag running on a hose to a rubber nipple, and you can have coffee whenever you want. You don't even have to have a mug to re-clean. In the future, we're thinking about we're going to generate our own wind power, drive electric cars, and buy organic food. We were doing that 100 years ago. So in many ways, we're really going back to what we were doing because we had the right idea then. But then there's another equation, which is technology. And even though I poke fun at technology, technology is going to play a huge role. And one of the roles it's going to play is increasing efficiency. That's one of the ways that we're really going to save on energy. And, you know, I just want to talk for a second about these green myths, these misunderstandings about going green, where you have people claiming, yeah, well, you know, going green means you have to sacrifice a lot. Or going green means you have to do with less or green products are more primitive, or they're ugly, or they're more expensive. No, that's not the case anymore. And especially because of technology, you're going to be actually able to do more with less, with greater efficiency, with your home appliances, with the vehicles that you drive. Everything that you're using is going to increase in efficiency and use less power. It's going to have less harmful impact on the planet. It's going to be a cost savings. So what it really comes down to is green is not only you know good for the planet, but it's actually good for the bottom line.